What's different about this book and every other, there's always more to learn. If you have your Bibles with you, we'd ask you to turn to Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11, and we're going to begin reading in verse 32. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32, and uh, while you're turning that way, I'll remind you that we are having the fellowship in the month of November, the 11th of November, that uh, second Friday, and um, we will uh, think about some hymns for us to sing, uh, for us to put before, because it's our, uh, it's our fellowship, so we have to come up with a couple too. All right. Hebrews chapter 11, beginning in verse 32. The Bible says, And what shall I say more? Excuse me. And what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, and of Barak, and David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, Stop the mouths of lions, quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed, waxed vigilant in the fight, turned to, turn to fight the army, the armies of the aliens. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you uh, for your word. We thank you for your church. We thank you for each and every one that is here this morning. Lord, we pray this morning that you might save someone, that you would touch their hearts, that you'd make them living again, uh, that you would make them cry out for your goodness. Lord, we pray that you would continue to bless our church, that we would hear from you time to time, and that you would encourage our souls. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, some verses I've heard preached on many, many, many times, and uh, that sometimes this chapter 11 called the Hall of Faith. And uh, we're going to look at it a little bit different because we're going we're gonna to look out at it by waxing strong. Now, uh, we, we need to be strong in the day which we live. You need to be strong for your children. You need to be strong for your grandchildren. And, you know, you think when you're young, as you get older, uh, it will be easier to be strong in the faith. But I found the opposite to be true. Now that I'm past middle age, because I'd have to be like 108 to be middle age now, uh, I've seen that it doesn't get easier, it gets more difficult. And, and so strength, uh, the more strength you can gain as a youth spiritually, the better off you're going to be. And we see that uh, uh, Paul or whomever the writer of this book was had reviewed the great acts of faith of the fathers of Israel. Uh, the writer was writing to the church at Jerusalem, so he knew that he would be, they would be familiar with all these great men of God that stood by faith. And so he used them as an example where our faith ought to be. Now, where your faith is this morning, only you can know. Now, I do know this, people can put on a good faith, but when difficulty arises, that's where you'll find your faith. And if it's anemic and small and useless, you'll find that out too. But if it's strong and you have the peace of God in the midst of the storm, you'll find that out too. Only you can know that, and uh, certainly uh, we should because the days of trouble are coming, and you need to have a strong faith in the day which we live. Uh, so the writer says, uh, who, uh, uh, verse 32, what sh uh, and what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon. Now, many of these men, and we're going to look at one that wasn't familiar to me, but many of these should be great men of faith that you know about if you, uh, if you study your Bible. And if you remember, Gideon 
had a lot of a lot of difficulty with faith in the beginning. He was the one that said, Lord, if you want me to do it, make the fleece wet and everything around it dry. And then that wasn't good enough. And he said, Lord, if you're really in this, make the fleece dry and everything around it wet. And God did that. And so he began to trust God. And then came a day he was going up against his enemy and he had thousands of an army thousands and he and the lord god said i want you to reduce your army and he reduced it and he said i want you to reduce it again and he reduced it again and he said one more time when they come when they come to the brook i only want you to Keep the one that laps, the, the ones that lap like dogs. Now, I, I break out of a creek all my life, and I don't know about y'all, but I stink it up. I, I've never laughed like a dog, have you? And uh, But he says, you get the ones that lap like dogs. And you know what? They were in the minority, and he was down to 300. Yeah. And then the Lord God said, go. You, 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 take care, you take care of the enemy now. Now, that took a great faith. But it took a, it, it built over a, a period of time. Uh, you, you don't have faith to face the battle when you begin. Now, a lot of people think they do, but they don't. And, and so we see that he reminds them <coughs> of Gideon. He says, you know that one. And of Barak and of Samson. Now you think about Samson. Samson, if you look at his life, he wasn't much of a servant of God. But he had one command, and he followed it most of the time. And the one command was this, don't ever get your hair cut. Yeah. Now, uh, remember, that's the Old Testament. And uh, he, uh, he, was, uh, and he was faithful to that. And he had unbelievable strength of being faithful over that one thing. But you know, the, word, the world hounded him, Delilah hounded him and hounded him, and what's the secret? Why are you so strong? Why are you? And he finally gave in to her. And uh, the, as the Bible puts it, told her all. And you know what? He was that. And uh, then his hair began to grow again. See, God is faithful. We are not. You know, I would to God that I was more faithful than I was. God is faithful. We are not. But we need to, you know where your faith needs to be? It needs to be in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Everything you have, put it in, uh, put your faith in the Lord. And so we find the, these men that he's naming, <clears throat> some were amazing, some were mediocre. <clears throat> all had faith in the Lord God. Of Jeph Jephthah, of David, David also, and Samuel of the prophets. Now David, time and time again, even, even when his son Absalom came up in rebellion against him and he, and he, uh, he, he, he escaped uh, and, and flew from him, even then his faith was in the Lord. Now I've had a lot of uh, a lot of school of hard knocks, but thankfully my children have never come up against me. I think that would be about as hard as it can get. I really do. And even in that, David had faith. And you wonder, you know, why did David go have to go through all that? Well, the Lord God was preparing him for a purpose, and the purpose was to lead Israel. The purpose was to be their king. Their pur his purpose was to, to uh, unify the nation, and he accomplished that. His purpose was to move the capital to Jerusalem. He accomplished all those things by faith, but he had to go through the sifter first. What did the Lord Jesus say to Peter? He said, Satan hath desired to sift thee as wheat. See, uh, Satan wants you. Think about Job. Have you considered my servant Job? Who said that? The devil didn't say it. The Lord God did. And you know what? It took a long time, but Job came out better on the other side. So these experiences we have in our life 
are very deliberate. They're, they're not by accident. If we believe that God is really sovereign, and I certainly do, and I believe it more and more as the years fly by, then we cannot deny there are no accidents. There's nothing that happens per chance. And, and you know what? If you wrap your car around a tree, <laughs> learn the example in it. Learn, learn what, what God was saying. Slow down? I don't know. Uh, learn, learn what the... Or maybe you walk away from it, you lose your car, but you're just fine. That's, that's a miraculous gift of God. We need to see the such one. The next one he uh, mentions is Samuel. And you know, Samuel, um, he did some wonderful things, saved as a young boy. Uh, remember, uh, uh, he was, <laughs> Eli was so out of the will of the Lord, not you, Eli, uh, and that uh, when God spoke to Samuel, he didn't know what was happening. Y'all remember that? And finally, it says that it occurred to him, it, he perceived it, and he said, the next time you hear the voice, say, I'm here. <laughs> Yeah. And, uh, and he did. So this is many, many, many years later, nearing the end of Samuel's life. And what did Samuel do that was so amazing? He took a little shepherd boy, who probably at the time was about 14, and anointed him king of Israel while Saul was still living. That's pretty amazing. That's putting your life on the line, right? It was also saying, Saul... I don't recognize you as king anymore. And, uh, and, and so we see that that faith grew and grew and grew over time. And, and, and that is the nature of faith. We need to be filled with a faith that impacts our life. And you know, it never ceases to amaze me that God's people will trust the only thing of real value they have, their never dying soul, but won't trust them for a biscuit. That, 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 never, that never ceases to amaze me. And I, I say that within myself, where is your faith? How, how, how big is it? Well, what, what is the possession of your faith? What do you do on a daily basis concerning your faith? Verse 33, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions. Now, I want you to uh, look specifically at stop the mouths of lions. <laughs> because we know one fellow, two, one fellow that really did that, and that was David. And he... Uh, came after his lambs, and it says that he just broke. That, that's amazing, you know, a little, a little kid. And he did it by faith. You, you know why he kept those sheep all those years? So God could build his faith. And if I remember the scriptures correctly, he also killed a bear the same way. That's an incredible amount of faith. Now, I don't know you, but as a 14-year-old boy, I'd have been, I'd been, Pretty scared if a if a bear uh, or a lion came out of the woods, and you know I probably would have ran. But those experiences had a purpose, and it was to build his faith. How strong is your faith this morning? How much confidence do you have in the person of the Almighty? How much how much belief do you have in that He doeth all things well? Yeah. <clears throat> Verse 34, quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, wax vigilant in the fight. Now, I want you to see, out of weakness was made strong, waxed by vigilant, uh, waxed, um, uh, that last word means courageous. It means brave. It means willing, willing to stand. Um, are you really willing to stand in the modern day? You, you know, uh, me and Anderson were talking about the public school system and how corrupt it's become. 
and you know it's going to get worse it, it's not going to improve and and it takes a lot to uh, stand against that in the day these young people I guess uh, everybody uh, all the children that build are homeschooled uh, and I you know, a lot of homeschoolers are made fun of. They're they're looked at as undereducated. They're they you know what? Stand in the day which you live. That 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 it, be strong in that. Don't be ashamed to be homeschooled. Be be, be glad in it. <coughs> be 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 <coughs> courageous. That that's what we that's what we need. And so we find that all these people are named that stood for the faith and that stood strong in the days which they lived, although all the time periods were very different, they were strong in the faith. So how was it done? How was this accomplished? How will your faith continue to be strong in that day? Now, most of those men you ought to recognize, Barak, Samson, but you may know that I did not know the little gentleman Jephthah, Jephthah in the middle. I don't know who that gentleman is, or I didn't until I studied the Word of God. Why was his faith mentioned in the great hall of faith? What made him strong? What experiences did he go through that put him here? And what experiences will you go through that will test your faith even today? Now, we need to be prepared. Uh, you know, it's very important before you respond to anything is to pray. Uh, it's a... Uh, those incidents happen very quickly. Remember very clearly, and I always remember this, when Brother Jarrett called me and he said, Aaron just cut his hand off. And I had this, I, I repeated it back to him. It was, it, I, I just couldn't believe it. And, uh, but it was real. And the only thing I could think of is say, well, we're on our way. You know, those things happen very quickly. But you know, despite all that, and you know, Aaron will be in that situation the entirety of his days. I saw Jared's faith grow. I did. And I hate that. I mean, every time, you know, but you know what? I fully believe Aaron's faith will grow too. He, he, he will come through life stronger, probably, than we did. Because he's learned to adapt. He's learned to continue. See, nothing happens per chance. So what, what, what set him apart? Why did this, this individual, Japheth, why, uh, why was he mentioned here? Well, I'll show you. If you go back with me to the book of Judges chapter 11, Judges chapter 11, and we'll see uh, what his life consisted of and exactly what, it was, uh, what was accomplished uh, that he should uh, uh, end up with the rest. Judges chapter 11. Judges chapter 11, and we're going to begin reading in the very first verse. The Bible says now, uh, Jephthah the Gideonite was a mighty man of valor and was the son of a harlot. Now, I think it's very, very interesting that he starts out with what most people would consider a step behind everybody else. Uh, less than perfect. Not where he needed to be. Uh, white trash. Isn't it amazing what God uses <laughs> to his glory and honor? Do uh, you know what the writer of Amazing Grace was? A slave trader. Isn't it amazing what God can do? Uh, isn't, it, isn't it unreal what he does to accomplish his own glory? So this man has a number of comments about him, but the one that really stood out to me was that he was a son of a harlot. Now notice what it says. Now Jacob, 
the Gideonite was a mighty man of valor. Now that means someone who is brave. That means someone who's courageous. That means someone who who has the has the uh, strength to step out. That was his nature. That's who he was. But what stood out about him? The son of a harlot. You, you know. You know what the world is going to try to do to you? Do to you any mistakes that you previously made? That's what they're going to put in your face. That is their nature. That's who they are. That's what they'll do. Now, I'll, it never ceases to amaze me that people criticize that because what did that child have to do with it? Nothing. <laughs> right? But they were criticized. They, they were put down. Now, the thing about uh, being a child of this nature, you know, daddy's never mentioned. You, you remember when the harlot was brought uh, before uh, the Lord Jesus and said this woman was caught in adultery even in the very act. Well, where's he at? Right? Mm -hmm. you, you never hear that part of the story. And, and so we find then that it's a very similar thing here, but he was criticized because of his lineage and because of where he came from. Verse 2, And Gideon's wife bare him sons, and his wife's sons grew up, and they thrust out uh, Jephthah and said unto him, Thou shalt not inherit in our father's house, for thou art the son of a strange woman. Now, Two things I want you to notice here. He is losing his position. And you know, sometimes we go through life like that and we, we lose what we perceive as a position, as an area where we can uh, uh, esteem ourselves or, or to excel in. And you lose that. And that's what he was going through. You know what that is for many people? It's quitting time. That's when they stop. That ought not to be. Uh, but many people, that's exactly where what happens is that they, well, you know, forget about it. I'm done. I'm not going to be involved in that anymore. And uh, huh. we see that that's not this man's attitude. Verse 3. Jen, then Jephthah fled from his brethren and dwelt in the land of Tob. And, and there were gathered vain men to, Je to Jephthah and went out with him. And it came to pass in the process of time that the children of Ammon made war against Israel. Now, I want you to see these individuals that follow this man. Have you ever noticed in all the lives of David, all, all the I issues that happened in David's life, that there were always a few that went with him? There were always a few supporters. You know, what a wonderful thing it is just to have a handful of supporters. And, and, and David did. Uh, 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 there was one time that he said, I encouraged myself in the Lord. And the reason why is that the rest of them had turned against him. But isn't it a wonderful thing if it just be three or four people all down through your life that is encouragement to you in the Lord? And so, despite what his brothers did to him, he wasn't alone. Uh, don't, let, don't ever let the devil convince you that you're alone. You are not alone. The person of the Lord Jesus Christ, the person of the Holy Ghost, is always with his redeemed. Even if you're down to yourself, you at least have one more. Remember that. We always do. And so I want you to see in the midst of this, and he's out there with no support, no help, or uh, this handful of people that came with him, and war comes back on the scene. Now notice what his brethren do. And it was so when, verse 5, and it was so when the children of Ammon made war against Israel, the elders of Gilead went to fetch Jephthah out of the land of Tob. Now, I want you to see the, uh, the self-righteousness of those people. They only wanted him there when they needed him. And you know what? That's, that offends most people, does it not? 
It upsets most people. It, it, it brings most people down. Uh, but we'll see that the Lord used it. That war that happened was expressly to bring him back into line. It was expressly to bring him back to even the, the headship of his tribe. There are no accidents. You know what? He learned to make it on his own out there. He learned to, he learned to be a leader in a situation that could have been the end of him. God has a reason. The Lord has a reason for where you're at. Learn from it. Gather the lessons. Do uh, huh. find your find your true friends, and that's exactly what he does. So they go out and invite him to come home. And they said, verse six, and they said unto unto Jephthah, Come and be our captain, that we may fight with the children of Ammon. And Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, Did not you hate me? And expel me out of out of my father's house, and, and why are you come unto me now that you are in distress? Now that would be the attitude of most people, and we'll see that that uh, Jephthah does the the right thing. But he says, "Now you want me? Did you not throw me out? Did you say that you didn't need me?" And you know what? I believe if it had stopped here, he would have never made it into the hall of faith. This was a testing of his faith. And now the very, the very hardest test wasn't being thrown out. The very hardest test wasn't going hungry. The very hardest test wasn't being isolated. The very hardest test, are you going to do the right thing? Mm -hmm. Despite being knocked around and slapped around and rejected as nothing more than trash, are you going to do the right thing? Uh, that's a very hard thing, is it not? You get in the flesh. Uh, if I was oh, oh Jephthah, I'd have said, take care of it yourself. <laughs> right? But that's not what he did. That's not what he did. Uh, he believed more in truth than, than the rejection that he received. Listen, church, you are going to be rejected down through the years. You, you just depend on that. What we preach, what we teach is not enticing to the flesh. And so you're going you're gonna, to, oh, you go to that weird church. We've seen y'all before, right? Y'all ain't even in the association, <laughs> right? That's okay, right? Be ready. Have your faith ready. And, and, and so we see that uh, that he has a decision to make whether he will will he live in his offenses or will he serve God. And I think every day that we get up out of the bed and get ready for another day, we can take that. Are we going to live in our offenses? Are we going to live in our misery? Are we going to have the hummy drums for another day? Or are we going to serve God in the hummy drummies? You know what? Uh, my, my wife hates rain, and I just noticed it was raining again. Uh, and you know what? <laughs> She's got all her visits tomorrow. Going to see a bunch of Amish people. Amish houses are a mess in the rain. And, uh, you know, she's got all that to do tomorrow. But you know what? Rejoice in it. Yeah. Uh, Bible says that he reigneth from the just and the unjust. So where does rain come from? But it'd be real easy to stay at home, right? Mm -hmm. It'd be real easy. Listen, it's going to... It's going to be dark, dark next week after the time falls back. And it, it'll already be dark about two hours before church time even comes. It'd be, be real easy to stay at home, would it not? But is that a display of your faith? You know, I would say that it is. When I, when I was a young preacher, if people didn't come to church, it would stress me out. You know why people come to church? It's a measure of their faith. And faith is not that something I can impute. That comes from the Almighty. So why should I be upset about it? 
Why, why should why should I lose sleep? And so we find then that we have a decision, and Japheth had a decision. He had he had a he had a he had to decide what he would do. Verse eight. And the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah, Therefore we turn again to thee now, that thou mayest go with us and fight against the children of Ammon, and be our head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. And Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, If you bring me home again to fight against the children of Ammon, and the Lord deliver them before me, shall I be your head? In other words, am I going to stay in this leadership position? Am I going, do you just need me down because you're down and out? Or do you need a leader? Do you need someone to, to uh, really lead your nation? You know, that's a, it, it's very important that we, that we ask ourselves of our own motives, don't we? What Jephthah do, was doing to me was not bad. In other words, are you going to throw me out when this is over with? I'm going to be back out here in the woods again? If we win, what are you going to do? What, what's the situation going to be? And we see, we see that sometimes when we're building our faith, <laughs> it's no wrong, there, there's nothing wrong with questioning people's intent. I have found that to be very true. And so he says, what are you going to do? Verse 9, and Jephthah, and Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, If you bring me home again to fight against the, uh, the children of Amnon, and the Lord deliver them before me, shall I be your head? And the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah, The Lord be witness between us if we do not according to thy words. Now, he has an unusual opportunity. Now, at this point in his life, it would have been very easy to get in the flesh. You know, if you have some success in your ministry, and that's about the only thing I can, I can relate this to, it's easy to get prideful. It's easy to say, look at me. It's easy uh, to say, woohoo. And really, Jephthah had that opportunity. He could have really gotten in the flesh. And we need to be very, very cautious of those things that come into our lives that can put us in the flesh and make us proud and make us glad. But now notice what he does. First of all, he does take the position. Now go all the way down to verse 28 with me. Judges 11 and verse 28. Howbeit the king, of children, the king of the children of Amnon hearkened not unto the words of Jephthah which he sent him. Now, what the words was and what Jephthah suggested, you surrender to us now before the battle starts. That, that was his suggestion. <laughs> you know what? Wouldn't it have been a wonderful thing if he said yes, but I've, ne I've never known God to give us the easy way, have you? I I've never known God to say, okay, we'll do it this way. So now he's back where he needs to be. He, he, and his faith has grown by this, this event that put him back where he ought to be. And his faith is immediately tested again. He said, <laughs> that old king said, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> No, we're not. We're not giving you nothing. So now it comes a time in his life. What what will he do? What what will be the next step? And so in verse twenty nine, the Bible says, "Then the spirit of the Lord came on to Jephthah." Now I want you to see always the eternal Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, far before uh, the church was even in existence. It says then. The Spirit, the Holy Ghost, 
of the Lord came upon Jephthah, and he passed over Gilead and Manasseh, and passed over Mespah of Gilead, and from Mespah of Gilead passed unto uh, the children of Ammon. So I want you to see that uh, he moved forward. The Spirit came on him and he moved forward. So you, ne you never want to go in retreat. You ever notice in the, uh, uh, the uniform for a Christian, as it's given, I think it's in Ephesians, uh, the, blood, the breastplate of righteousness, uh, the sword of the Spirit, there's no back piece to that uniform. That means retreat is not an option. Retreat is not something you do. So in the, in, the, in the midst of all that's about to happen, he moves forward on the merit of the Lord. Uh, verse 30, And Jephthah vowed a vow to the Lord and said, If thou shalt without fail deliver the children of Ammon into mine hands, then it shall be that whatsoever cometh forth of the doors of my house to meet me when I return in peace from the children of Ammon, shall surely be the Lord's. I will offer it up for a burnt offering. Now I want you to see that he makes this commitment to the Almighty and uh, says, I will, I, will, I will give you everything. The first thing that comes out of my house, if you will, uh, if you will give me these people. And the Lord did. The Lord gave him a great and wonderful, wonderful victory. And we find that it ends here in the, in the home of faith. How, uh, how faithful are you? Now there is a little stringent to that text. You read it on this week. You know, the first one that came out of his house was his only child, a daughter. She came out with her tambourettes and was, was rejoicing with her father. And he had to be, and, and she, the only child, is what he had to give. You know what? Give your children to the Lord. And you, you know what it meant in this sense? He didn't kill her. But she would never marry. Just like Samuel, she would forever be the Lord's. Just, you know, what's a better place for him? What, 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 what's something any, any better you could do than give your children to the Lord? And Jephthah was faithful. He was faithful to that commitment. And he ends up in the hall of faith. How, how deep is your faith? Well, exercise it. The only way that you grow your muscles is exercising. Exercise your faith. Yeah. Put it to the test. Mm -hmm. See, you know, a lot of times we, we miss our situation by solving it ourselves. Do we not? We, we miss our opportunity of increasing our faith. Me and Donna both are real bad about that. Tom comes up, we'll do this, this, and this. Right? What about giving it to the Lord? What about, what about committing it to Him? And just seeing what He might do. Lord, increase our faith. And He certainly will.